Hi everyone, I'm Rosie and welcome to Vox Yoga. So this is a video about what your vocal warm-up could look like. So there's lots of different stages I have through my vocal warm-up, particularly in the morning, a little bit of physical work, easing in with some gentle vocalizing and then moving to uh, some more technical exercises. So this is just going to show you uh, the little sections and give you some ideas of what you could do and what your vocal warm-up might look like. So this is my vocal warm up when I have the time. So I tend to do it if I'm starting teaching kind of late morning or I have a rehearsal on, um, or it's really great to do if I have a performance in the evening. For example, on a Saturday, if I'm not teaching, you tend to, you know, not using my voice so much in the day and then I have to perform in the evening. It's really nice to take the time to work through these stages. As with all my videos, take the bits that work for you. You might find that you need a really long physical warm-up or if you're quite active you don't need that much at all. You might find that you do lots of SOVT work already so you don't need as much as someone else might if they have a generally um, more tired voice or suffer from vocal fatigue. So take the bits that work for you, I hope it might give you some ideas um, and it's really all about just keeping a healthy voice. First things first in the morning, I always have a huge glass of water. You must hydrate. If you think your body's been without water overnight, you're gonna be quite dehydrated when you wake up. And it takes, a, it takes time for your body and your vocal folds to be hydrated from when you have water. I once heard it was four hours, but I haven't read any research to back that up. But just know that it takes, you know, a few hours for the water to actually get into your system and hydrate you and hydrate your voice. If you're dehydrated, it just takes much more effort for the vocal folds to work efficiently. So it's such an easy thing to do just to drink water throughout the day, throughout your practice, keep the body hydrated. I always have pint glasses around the house. And of course, if I'm out and about, always have a bottle of water with me. <laughs> Next up, steaming. Yes, I'm steaming my vocal cords with a teapot. So, Steaming is fantastic to keep lots of moisture and mucus happy in the throat and in that area. Of course, you can steam with hot water and a bowl, tea towel over your head. That's kind of more for the sinuses and getting a full steam. So it's great if you're congested. So you can buy a small steamer that gets a bit more isolated and just goes into the mouth or some of them cover the nose as well. I did have one that I bought and I found it quite tight and like I wasn't actually getting enough steam. So I tried the teapot method, which I actually really like. Um, if you are gonna steam with a teapot, please message me asking for advice first because you really only need a small bit of water at the bottom. And then through the teapot spout, it goes directly to the back of the throat, which just feels really nice. Um, nebulizers are fantastic as well. I think I'm going to buy one. I'm just doing a bit more research. So they're great because they're portable and they use mist. And if you use um, a saline solution, 0.9%, then it matches the um, concentration around your vocal cords. So it's supposed to be really good. A daily steam is fantastic for the voice. And I like to do it each morning when I wake up. It's really great to do some form of physical exercise, something that gets the joints moving, gets the energy moving, starts to engage some muscles, because a healthy body means a healthy voice. I obviously love yoga. I think it's really great to work on loads of different body parts and release any unnecessary tension, which is what we want. So I like to just do, well, depending how much time I have, generally like a 20 minute yoga in the morning before I sing that kind of focuses a little bit more on um, the upper body, releasing any shoulder tension, which I know I have, particularly in the morning. Just really helps me to feel aligned, helps to lengthen the spine, really open the ribs. And after I've done yoga, I just always feel like I'm in a much better place to approach my vocal practice. So hopefully you've done some physical exercise or yoga or just some kind of stretches that make your body feel released and relaxed. So when you come to start your vocal warm up, just really think about your alignment. So make sure your feet are flat on the floor. You're really feeling all four points of your feet. So imagine like you're wearing a roller skate. Um, 
really touching the floor, micro bend in the knees so that you're not locking because that will tilt our pelvis. Um, make sure your hips are nice and free, shoulders relaxed, neck relaxed, and then feel like you've got a piece of string all the way from your feet, just pulling you up and then you'll be ready to go. So during my yoga practice, I did some neck stretches, some things to open up the shoulders and free up the upper body. So now I like to do some more focus kind of release exercises for my jaw, tongue and larynx. It's always great to do some tongue circles and jaw release exercises. I personally spend a little bit longer on this section because I wear retainers at night and I often clench my teeth, which means that my jaw feels a bit tight in the morning and I think my tongue is often in a kind of further back position. So I like to do a few of these exercises. Little shout out to myself here. I've got some videos. Um, if you're not sure where to start with your jaw, tongue, um, larynx, neck, warm ups, so you can have a go at some of them. And then the ones that you like, you can start to bring into your own practice. Connecting to the breath and exploring our breath is really important in singing. I generally do a lot of this during my yoga practice, so I would then end up doing a bit less now. If you are doing some breath work here, it's really nice to do some side stretches to work on opening the ribs and just focusing on finding release when we breathe. We don't always need to breathe really low. If we've got a quick breath and a phrase, it might be more efficient to um, have a more a higher breath. However, we do want to be able to find that release and be able to breathe into all of these areas around our torso and feel expansion. So I'd recommend doing some work like that. Some accent work might include things like feel the release. So it's just connecting to all of those muscles and the, getting the breath to work a little bit more. So moving on to a little bit more vocalizing now. And again, I often tend to vocalize through my yoga practice and throughout the morning. So first things first when it comes to vocalizing, SOVT and strophonation are a fantastic place to start. So I do SOVT which is semi-occluded vocal tract exercises, which uh, basically means something is blocking the um, airflow, something's in the way, one, some of our articulators. So um, siren is the classic SOVT. Mm, zzz, v, something you can add pitch to. Mm, n, rrr, rrr, and my new favorite, puffy cheeks. Woo! which is great for lengthening the vocal tract. Um, and then strophonation, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, SOVT, I have been already doing, it's kind of the first thing I do when I wake up, to be honest. Um, in the shower, when I'm doing my makeup, um, when I'm making breakfast, when I'm doing my yoga. Um, it's just a great, gentle way to start vocalizing. And it's the a really healthy thing for your voice is the most healthy thing you can do. Um, talking about strophonation as well, there's actually loads on social media at the moment about strophonation and SOVT, um, which is fantastic to, you know, get people thinking about it. It's not a new thing though, it's been around for ages. I started singing lessons, I think, in the year 2000, and my teacher had me using straw and doing sirens every lesson. Um, so know that it's a trusted, tried and trusted, what is it? Tested, tried and tested and trusted um, singing thing. So Strawfination, there's some great, lovely companies that make straws you can buy now um, that are adjustable and have different widths and you can use in reverse. So check some of them out. If you don't have them, you can do what I do, which is I just use an old iced coffee cup and I have two straw widths. This one actually got given to me when I had speech therapy quite a long time ago because I had nodules. No shame there. Um, and it's the first thing they do for recovery. So you know it's great. This is just um, an environmentally friendly straw for drinks, which um, someone bought me. Just remember hygiene to clean them. And this little cleaner came with a straw as well. Though I had to clean my cleaner 
this morning because it was dusty. The duster was dusty. So hygiene. <laughs> so you can do breath work with the straw as well. You'll feel some engagement starting to happen. Um, and then it's really good for... vocalizing through. And then you can do it in water as well. So the, what, um, how it all works, um, SOVT and straw phonation is um, back pressure. So um, we have a lot of air pressure coming through when we sing and this just sends some of it back to kind of balance it out and it makes our vocal folds vibrate more easily. So again, the first thing to start, start with is a thicker straw. Ooh, it's a bit like puffy cheeks. Ooh. Um, lengthens, helps to lengthen the vocal tract. When you put it in water, you get different resistance. So you can play around with it. Um, the more water you have, it's harder. Um, and then the smaller the straw, well, not harder, but more effort, more energy, more resistance you have as well. So... So nice. It just feels so good. Um, and it really helps to strengthen the voice. So again, I'll have this in the kitchen in the morning and I just tend to do free vocalizing. Then when I get here to my piano, I like to do patterns like arpeggios. It's great to go through any sticky bits, which we all have, particularly in the morning. Um, or if we ate lots of food last night, like I did. Um, so, once you've done some strophination and SOVT, you can start to add more open sounds, so starting to think about vowel sounds. I actually tend to start my singing warm-ups when I'm working with vowels, like, really easy, just with a five-note scale. Um, it's like... E or like e just something really relaxed it makes me feel good I know it's quite easy and I'm a professional singer and teacher but you don't need to always do the difficult things find an exercise that you really like so um, I actually recorded some piano tracks for my students, which I now use to warm up. Um, you don't need a piano, you know, it's fine. Or there's loads of tracks on YouTube and Spotify that you can use to warm up with. So explore different vowels, explore different consonants. I really like to use fricatives, z, v, at the start of my sound. Z, I really like fricatives are great to get a clear tone and having a nice sung consonant at the start just gets you really in tune, which we want <laughs> when we're singing. Just remember to keep thinking about your alignment when you're singing. I think it's really great to have a bit of movement when we sing to ensure that we're not tensing up. You can see when I practice, I always use my hands. Um, of course, you don't want to get into the habit of always using your hands because you can't do that on stage all the time. But just feeling the music and getting the music in your body is really useful. So I then like to stick with the vowels with some maybe uh, different consonants at the start of them to open up a bit more. So larger intervals, so I'll do some arpeggios. I like to start with um, more open, legato, slower exercises. I also tend to do these on what I would call a neutral sound for me. So trying to keep a neutral larynx, kind of a mixy sound, just going between the two registers. Um, and then later in my warm up, depending on the repertoire that I'm going to sing, I would move on to a more kind of specific vocal exercise, which we'll get onto in a minute. If I have a sticky point, I'll come back to something like a rolled R. So you can really use those SOVTs throughout. Don't forget both ends of your range. We often do singing warm-ups that go up, but we need to go down as well. So just thinking you don't have to do the extremes of your range, but warming up as much as feels comfortable. Ga, 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 ga. 
I'll then start to add a bit more movement, things that um, are a bit more technical or a bit faster, just to get things moving a little bit quicker. Tongue twisters. My favorite at the moment is popper cater petal copper plated kettle. So I like to work up or down the scale. Popper cater petal copper plated kettle, popper cater petal copper plated kettle, popper cater petal copper plated kettle, popper cater petal copper plated kettle. Work up and down the scale or again around the range that maybe I find trickier or that I want to work with for the song and um, just get the lips, teeth, tongue and the articulators working. You can do that at the start of your warm up with speech as well. Popper cater petal, copper plated kettle can work in really nicely with the breath work. After I've done this, I tend to think about what repertoire I'm going to do. Um, I sing a lot of different styles, so some days I'll be doing something that's really classical, some art song, um, some days I'll be doing musical theatre, or I'll be belting something that's a bit higher, um, or I sing a lot of jazz as well, so it might be more low with a more kind of aspirate sound. So I will always do these kind of warm-ups first with a more neutral larynx that just feels like my go-to, and then from there, I'll think about, okay, what repertoire am I singing? So it's really great to choose a song that you know really well and just sing a verse and a chorus, just do it, and it makes you feel good. Um, and you can do these songs, I think it's a really good way to warm up, is to do the song that you know really well um, on your SAVTs or Strophonation. So um, let's pick a song. I've just got Avenue Q in my head because I've been doing it with a student. Um, there's a fine, fine line. What's that? Na, 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 na. I don't have the time to waste on. And it just gets your muscles working at the right pitches and it's a bit of a warm up. Um, so it's really nice to do your songs with your straw phonation and your SOVTs. So if I was going to sing Avenue Q, I'd do some twang. So the exercise that I was doing, na 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 Working that um, around the range of the song is really helpful. Taking key phrases, na 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 I'd probably belt the ending, I think, actually. So then I might do a belt exercise. I might do yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. Or, if I'm going to do classical, um, I'd go back to, what might I do? Um, so just thinking about my setup, my larynx position, um, tongue position for the style that I'm going to sing. So it's kind of where you go, depending on what style you're singing. Um, and it's really great, you know, take Take a phrase from the song, start it at a comfortable pitch. If it's, you know, you've got a high phrase and then work up um, to make it higher. So these are the components of my vocal warm up. So it's really just finding that your body is nice and free, relaxed, ready to go. You're connecting to your alignment and your breath. You're starting small, getting the muscles, those tiny vocal folds, getting those muscles uh, gradually warmed up. Strophonation, SOVT, and then working to adding more sound. If you just wake up in the morning and you're like, 
I'm going to sing Define Gravity and you just belt it out, that's when you're going to get into vocal problems. If I don't have time to do as full a warm up as this, um, I'll just take small little chunks from it. But it's just finding the bits that you think you're going to need and then coming back to them throughout the day as well. You know, we do get physically and vocally tired. So it's just having a little reset and a check in and making sure that you can be as healthy vocally healthy as you can. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you've enjoyed it and you want to find out more about a healthy body, healthy voice, connecting the body, breath, mind and the voice, then hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.